Engines full power and lift off of NASA Crew 8. Go Falcon, go SpaceX, and go NASA. Sunday, March 3rd, 7.53 Pacific Time. The SpaceX Crew 8 mission blasts off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Among those on board, Dr. Michael Barrett. Born in Camas, Washington, Barrett is the pilot of NASA's SpaceX crew and a specialist in aerospace medicine. I had the chance to talk with Dr. Barrett on the record from the International Space Station about the work he's doing, what it's like to live in space, and the path he took to get there. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station, I'm ready for the event. How did you become an astronaut? So I had a lot of broad interests. I think uh, career anxiety, if you will, is kind of a common trait amongst us. And uh, growing up in kind of a farming community, there were lots of stars. I loved astronomy. I built telescopes. We were close to the ocean. I, I kind of liked uh, oceanography and marine biology. And uh, long story short, I went to the University of Washington and just found abundant opportunity to kind of explore every passion I had. If you try to put all your passions together in one place, there's no other place like NASA where you bring all those skills to bear and you use them all, all the time. You arrived in space the first time in 2009 on the Soyuz and then the space shuttle. And then SpaceX's Dragon. So how do all those three compare? It's a bit of an apples and oranges uh, comparison. I think the main thing is just the generational difference between the spacecraft. SpaceX in particular, the Dragon, it's basically a new generation spacecraft. We've all seen pictures from space looking back at Earth, but can you describe for us what it's really like to see it from your perspective? I'll tell you that uh, I'm always at the window when we're flying over the Pacific Northwest. Uh, it, it is pretty overwhelming um, when, when you look at that, that incredible blue planet with white swirly clouds and, and uh, Earth down there just kind of hanging out in the blackness of space. You, you get a strong sense of beauty, you get a strong sense of fragility, uh, and that you really need to take care of it. Something I wish everybody could see. Can you describe for us what it's like to be at zero gravity, how your body adjusts? You're a physician, you work with aerospace medicine. How do you make those adjustments? That is my, my passion, really, how the human adapts. And we happen to be extremely adaptable creatures. Zero gravity challenges that in an incredibly unique way. But to sum it up, um, you will lose maybe 15% of your blood volume, your bones and muscles will start losing mass and integrity. Your heart changes shape, uh, the diaphragm moves up towards the head, the, uh, the lungs change shape a little bit and actually get a little bit more efficient. Uh, there's a lot of changes in how blood flow is regulated, metabolism, how the kidney functions, the immune system. All of these changes happen uh, and after a couple weeks, two or three weeks, you, you actually start feeling pretty good. What is it like to be living up there in such a confined space? The space may be confined, but it, it's not all that small. We have a permanent crew of seven. We're not bumping into each other. Uh, it, it's actually quite a bit of room, and that's not so much of a problem. What is the longest you've ever spent in space? How long is this trip? My first flight was 199 days. Um, and, and I'll just tell you that even though I have a big family, we're very attached. I didn't want to come home <laughs> on the last day. We were scheduled for a six month tour and that can always be plus or minus a little bit. And at the end of six months, I'll probably be bargaining with all sorts of people to try to extend up here a little bit. I know you're doing a lot of work up there that will eventually get man back to the moon and eventually to Mars. We so appreciate you taking the time with us. Thanks so much, appreciate it. My pleasure to talk to you, thanks so much. Dr. Barrett talked about his family. He's the father of five with three grandkids. Says he's constantly connected to family, to Earth, through the internet, satellite systems, the telephone, email, technology, right? Uh, in the immediate future, he says he's looking forward to a couple of spacewalks planned for May and June.